Good morning. We are going to begin with Albert Camus's The Fall. Albert Camus is a, a French writer of a Alger, Algerian origin. Um, he was born in Algiers and he later shifted to France. We will talk about that later and his short novella The Fall, which was written in 1956. The key words from The Fall are uh, The Fall that is the title of our uh, novella, uh, philosophy of absurdism, uh, philosophy of human existence, myth of Sisyphus and Camus Sartre uh, partnership and, in, and the influence of Sartre on uh, Camus and uh, uh, the technical aspect of uh, the fall which is uh, uh, which has been much appreciated, much emulated that is the confessional tone which Camus employs in the novella. I will begin with a quote by Albert Camus and you can also look at his dates 1913 to 1960 that is Camus life. So, um, in happy death one of his writings uh, Camus says, but in the end one needs more courage to live than to kill himself. In uh, his famous The Myth of Sisyphus, he says, there is but one truly philosophical problem and that is suicide. In The Rebel, which was written in 1951, he says, who despairs over an event is a coward, but he who holds hope for the human condition is a fool. So, those quotations, uh, those words by Camus uh, should be sufficient to tell you uh, about uh, Al Camus' philosophy of life. The bottom line is that human condition is hopeless. Camus was born, as I was just telling you, in Algeria. He was of French origin. He shifted to uh, France and came in uh, contact with the prominent figures of uh, the leftist uh, group and uh, that is how he came in, uh, in contact with uh, Jean Paul Sartre and his companion uh, Simone Beauvoir. At the uh, center of Camus's thought is the thesis that human existence is essentially absurd. So, that is what we were talking about, human existence or condition is essentially absurd. Human beings search for a meaning in their existence, but with the demise of traditional beliefs in a religion and ideology, this search remains meaningless. That means, that human condition is hopeless, is meaningless, is absurd. The philosophical concerns of uh, Camus remain isolation of individuals. Human beings are isolated. The entire universe is alien, it is hostile and human beings find themselves by some quirk of fate, some uh, some by some accident they are thrown in this alien and hostile universe. Along with uh, these issues Camus um, was also concerned with the issues of uh, evil and the finality of death. So, all these things you will find, all these uh, discussions you will find in uh, his works, especially the fall. Some of his major works are The Stranger. or in French it is called Lettrange. The French term for the fall 
is uh, la chute, that is the French term for the fall, the plague, where he discusses what happens when a society suffers a plague, a disease like plague. The rebel and the fall of curse, which was written in 1956. Camus won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1957. Camus essay, The Myth of Sisyphus was written in 1942 um, and uh, uh, it uh, describes, it, it elaborates on a Camus's, Camus's notion of the absurd and of its acceptance with the total absence of hope, which has nothing to do with despair, a continual refusal, which must not be confused with renouncement and a conscious dissatisfaction. Sisyphus is a mythical figure, a figure from uh, Greek mythology and uh, he is the person who challenges gods. Uh, as a punishment, he is condemned to repeat the same meaningless task of pushing a rock up a mountain, only to see it roll down again and then push it back up the mountain again. So, the essay concludes, the struggle itself is enough to fill a man's heart one must imagine Sisyphus happy, although Sisyphus leads a life of monotony, um, there is no change in his life, almost like the human existence. You do the same things, you have, you follow the same routine, uh, but uh, according to Camus, happiness can be found even in this routine, although existence remains meaningless. Okay. And, uh, we, uh, human beings life, it is full of day to day struggle, much like um, the life of Sisyphus. In uh, L'Etranger or The Stranger, which was uh, uh, published in 1942, uh, it begins very significantly, I will read it out to you. Mother died today or maybe yesterday, I cannot be sure. The telegram from the home says, your mother passed away, funeral tomorrow, deep sympathy which leaves the matter doubtful, it could have been yesterday. Uh, this uh, uh, essay is no, uh, this uh, uh, novel is noted for its laconic tone, as the news of the death arrives on an ordinary day. So, the lead character Mar Mar Marsal, lives for the sensual pleasures of the moment um, and yet ends up accepting responsibility for an accidental killing. And he is tried and judged guilty of murder because, not because he actually murdered somebody, but he failed to cry at his mother's funeral and because he refuses to embrace Christianity. So, those are the grounds on which he is uh, uh, condemned uh, to be dead. But uh, he uh, it's not for the actual murder that he commits, but because of uh, because his uh, failure to conform to the accepted norms of society, his refusal to em embrace Christianity, and also his uh, uh, inability to cry at his mother's funeral. So this is the reason why he is uh, uh, condemned to death. So again, this is a very typical example of. Uh, Camus's notion of the uh, absurdity of the universe, of the society that we live in. Now, what is absurd? Absurdism um, is defined, for example, human existence, as we were just talking about. its meaninglessness, its dull monotony, its 
the hopelessness, the constant despair human beings live in, the ability or the rather the inability to connect. connect to other people, to uh, other members of the society. So, um, one of the key novels by um, uh, Camus, which expounds his philosophy of absurdism is L'Etranger, which we were just talking about, The Outsider, um, essay, The Myth of Sisyphus and then also his play Caligula. Okay. So, these are the key um, writings which encapsulate, encapsulate uh, Camus's vision or Camus notion of absurdism. For Camus, uh, absurd is not a negative term, it is not a synonym for ridicule, but it, uh, it symbolizes the true meaning of existence. Uh, absurdism for Camus is accepting the view that life is meaningless and this once you accept that you embrace the real view of life, the realistic view of life, because the universal is uh, illogical and it is also irrational. Once you accept that uh, life becomes much sim uh, simple. So, it is uh, in, in other words it is a more radical view of uh, Nietzsche's uh, declaration that God is dead. Now, um, We'll talk, talking about Camus and Sartre. Jean Paul Sartre, as we know, he is one of the leading philosophers of the 20th century, and uh, Sartre and Camus came together um, during the after the or during the Second World War. Um, they uh, uh, Philosophically, they shared a lot in common, but uh, their political ideologies differed, and which led to a you know a rift, and they went uh, they parted ways because uh, they couldn't uh, see eye to eye on certain political grounds. Because uh, Camus rejected the Soviet model of socialism, and Sartre still believed in that. So. Um, that was the reason, that was the main reason for their uh, the fall, their, 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 the fallout between them. Now, coming to La Chute, the fall, which was written in 1956. So, the fall was Camus, uh, Camus's last completed novel. On the surface, it is a simple narrative as the hero or the protagonist. Jean Baptiste Clemens. He recounts the events from the last few years of his life. So, it famously begins, I will read you um, a couple of lines at the beginning and then we will discuss. So, this is how the fall begins. May I? Offer my services without running the risk of intruding? Question mark. I fear you may not be able to make yourself understood by the worthy gorilla who presides over the fate of this establishment. In fact, he speaks nothing but Dutch. Unless you authorize me to plead your case, he will not guess that you want gin. There, I dare hope he understood me. That nod must mean that he yields to my arguments. He is on the move, indeed, he is making haste with a sort of careful deliberateness. You are lucky he did not grunt. When he refuses to serve someone, he merely grunts. No one insists. Being master of one's moods is the privilege of the larger animals. Now, I shall withdraw. Happy to have been of help to you. Thank you. I would accept it, if you were sure of not being a nuisance. You are too kind, then I shall bring 
my glass over beside yours. Now, who is the interlocutor? Interlocutor, you know, is the person who is being spoken to, who is, who is the listener. Here we find Jean Baptiste Clemens sitting in a bar. Okay, we'll, so, we have to also understand the setting, the narrative technique, the themes. So, um, it is against the backdrop of these three elements that we are going to understand the fall. So, uh, it begins with Jean Paul Baptiste, uh, Jean Baptiste Clemens um, in a, in, who is sitting in a bar and addressing an unnamed listener, an unnamed and unidentifiable uh, interlocutor. Who could it be? We, we are not very sure. So, let me read it again. Um, may I offer my services without running the risk of intruding? I fear you may not be able to make yourself understood by the worthy gorilla who presides over the fate of this establishment. In fact, he speaks nothing but Dutch. So, who is this gorilla? The bartender. Who are the people in this setting? You have the narrator, Jean Baptiste Clemens. You have the bartender. You have an unnamed unidentifiable listener. So, these are the three characters present in the bar. Why is it called gorilla? Because uh, maybe he is not civilized enough, he merely grunts, he is not articulate enough and perhaps this is uh, uh, Camus's commentary on a society, when people are not articulate enough, they are nothing more than mere animals. Mm, and then also uh, pay attention to the subsequent uh, sentence, being master of one's moods is the privilege of the larger animals. This bartender does not really count in the larger scheme of life, but uh, those people um, uh, are more dangerous who are in greater control. Okay, so, they become greater animals that you, and you should remember that uh, this novel is a response uh, to the ho horrors of Nazism and Holocaust in Europe. Okay. So, written in 1956, Albert Camus who pondered over the meaning of life, the f nature of evil. finality of death. All these elements are found in the uh, few first few lines itself, that human beings, those uh, who are in greater control, those who have the uh, a large bigger right to be the master of their moods are, ex are bigger animals are more dangerous people to the society and that is a clear reference to the Nazis. Next paragraph, you are right, his dumbness is deafening, it is the silence of the primeval forest heavy with menaces. At times, I am amazed by his obstinacy in snubbing civilized language, civilized languages, sorry, it is in plural. His business consists in entertaining sailors of all nationalities in this Amsterdam bar. So, this is important to understand. The setting is Amsterdam, the country in which it is taking the, the, uh, this uh, conversation is taking place is a bar in Amsterdam and uh, the name of the bar is Mexico City. So, this is your, this becomes your setting now, Mexico City is the name of the bar situated in Amsterdam. With such duties, would not you think there might be some fear that his ignorance would be uncomfortable? 
fancy the cro magnon man lodged in the tower of babel now uh, in this bar you have people of all nationalities it's like a melting pot amsterdam perhaps this is uh, a larger reference to uh, the city the to amsterdam as a place where people from all over come and get together so this is a bar which is uh, presided over by a bartender who speaks nothing but dutch and uh, it's almost like uh, a prehistoric man uh, who is uh, logged up in the tower of babel babel you know uh, that's the place where there are so many languages uh, being spoken at the same time that no one can follow anyone so that we were talk when we were talking about uh, in a human beings inability to connect this disconnect could be because of several factors it could be the boundaries of religion it could be the boundaries of nations it could be all these man made boundaries and the boundaries caused by languages so this disconnect which is a result of so many divisions among human beings okay, that is what uh, um, camus is interested in one of the rare sentences i have ever heard from his mouth proclaim that you could take it or leave it what did one have to take or leave doubtless our friend it's himself i confess i am drawn by such creatures who are all of a piece anyone who has meditated a good deal on man by profession or vocation is led to feel nostalgia for the primates they at least don't have any ulterior motives unlike uh, the the so called civilized human being primates do not have uh, an ulterior motive okay but the nazis are worse than the original cro magnon or the primates that's what is being discussed our host to tell the truth has some although he harbors them deep within him as a result of not understanding what is said in his presence he has taken on a distrustful character hence that look of touchy dignity as if he suspected at least that all is not perfect among men that disposition makes it less easy to discuss anything with him which doesn't concern his business notice for instance on the back wall above his head that empty rectangle marking the place where a picture has been taken down indeed there was a picture there a particularly interesting one a real masterpiece well i was present when the master of the house received it and when he parted with it in both cases he did after weeks of rumination with the same distrust in that respect society has somewhat spoiled you must admit the frank simplicity of his nature mind you i am not judging him i consider his distrust justified and should be inclined to share it if as you see my communicator communicative nature were not opposed to this i am talkative alas and make friends easily although i know how to keep my distance i seize an every, any and every opportunity when i used to live in france were i to meet an intelligent man i immediately sought his company now um, one key feature of a confessional tone confessional tone or even you know a dramatic monologue a dramatic monologue is uh, the kind a kind of writing where uh, there is a single speaker and he has an interlocutor a listener uh, the listener has very little to contribute by way of speech he just listens uh, the speaker does uh, the, the major part of talking and he uh, while talking he reveals his own personal true character robert browning uh, the british poet he was the master of dramatic monologue and in camus uh, camus is the fall we find you know uh, an improvement on that uh, technique 
not exactly an improvement, but then he has taken uh, the entire idea of dramatic monologue um, a step further. So, what happens when in a dramatic monologue a person talks and he talks and he reveals himself is self revelatory in nature. Interestingly, uh, the speaker in a dramatic monologue tries to project his best uh, put forward or his uh, the best part of his character or nature. What happens? What the reader uh, infers is exactly the opposite. We see, we find the uh, mendacity, the duplicity, the basic contradictions in the speaker's personality. So, it is not a very flattering portrait that emerges, although the speakers, the speaker tries to do his best, he tries to project uh, a very positive, a very flattering image of himself, but what, uh, what emerges at the end is not a very uh, glowing picture, it is rather the opposite. So, this is what he is trying to portray himself as, as an intellectual, as a person who is filled with curiosity, a very normal healthy kind of curiosity, an extremely uh, communicative person. Okay. Are you staying long in Amsterdam? A beautiful city, is not it? Fascinating. There is an adjective I have not heard for some time, not since leaving Paris in fact, years ago but the heart has its own memory and I have forgotten nothing of our beautiful capital nor of its keys. Keys are the harbors. Paris is a real trompe a magnificent dummy setting inhabited by 4 million silhouettes, nearly 5 million at the last census. Why? They must, they, they must have uh, multiplied and that would not surprise me. So, that is what his uh, uh, opinion of Paris is, that uh, it is a beautiful city, the speak, the listener finds it fa fascinating, but uh, according to Clemens, it is an overpopulated, congested city, where human beings are nothing more than mere shadows which is interesting, Albert, uh, Camus himself came from uh, uh, France. So, he does not have a very positive uh, image of Paris. The Dutch, they are much less modern, they have time, just look at them, what do they do? Well, these gentlemen over here live off the labours of those ladies over there, all of them moreover both male and female are very middle class creatures, who have come here as usual out of mythomania or stupidity, though too much or too little imagination in other words. From time to time, these gentlemen indulge in a little knife or revolver play, but do not get the idea that they are keen on it, their role calls for it, that is all, and they are dying of fright as they shoot it out. Nevertheless, I find them, find them more mor moral than the others. Those who kill in the bosom of the family by a process of attrition. Have not you noticed that our society or is organized for this kind of liquidation? You have heard of course, of those tiny fish in the rivers of Brazil that attack the unwary swimmers by thousands and with swift little nibbles, clean him up in a few minutes, leaving only an immaculate skeleton. Well, that is what their organization is. Do you want a good clean life like everybody else? You say of course, how can we say no? Okay, you will be cleaned up, here is a job, a family and organized leisure. And the little teeth attack the flesh, right down to the bone. But I am unjust, I should not say their organization, it is ours after all, 
it is a question of which will clean up the other. Now, uh, this is a very direct reference to the cruelty to the inhumanity to the innate barbarism in human beings. Human beings exist just to, to save themselves, not their own kind, but uh, they are selfish, they are cruel and they can eat, uh, it is almost like uh, an animal, you know, survival of the fittest. So, the larger fish eats up the smaller fish, they clean it up so well that all you find is is an immaculate skeleton and that is what human beings are and it is not their organization. Notice the way the words have been italicized, it is not just their organization, it is not, not just the Nazism or the Nazis or the perpetra uh, perpetrators of violence in any, way, uh, any form or anywhere um, and in any part of the world, it is not there it is ours. So, what we are talking about is the notion of collective guilt and collective responsibility. All of us are responsible for what happens in the rest of the world. All of us should share the collective guilt, we should, we should partake in the guilt when there are atrocities, when the, whenever there is a violation of human rights. That is what Camus's philosophy is all about. So, it is not just theirs, it is also ours. We cannot just say that it is not our problem, it is not, uh, it is not an evil uh, propagated by us, okay. it is theirs, it is not. That is what Camus says. We have to own up, we have to uh, accept the responsibility for every atrocity that happens in any part of the world. But allow me to introduce myself, Jean Baptiste Clemence at your service. Pleased to know you, you are in business no doubt, in a way excellent reply, judicious too. In all things we are merely in a way, not exactly, but in a way yes, you can get away with uh, uh, saying in a way, it's, it does not give you the specifics. Now, allow me to play the detective. You are my age in a way, with the sophisticated eye of the man in his forties, who has seen everything in a way. You are well dressed in a way, that is as people are in our country, and your hands are smooth, hence a bourgeois in a way, but a cultured bourgeois. Uh, most of Camus's uh, writings are an attack on the uh, bourgeois society, the middle class society, the complacent, the complacency, uh, the self satisfaction class, uh, the self satisfaction of the middle class. Okay. So, therefore, so here are a bourgeois in a way, but a cultured bourgeois. We think we are cultured, but are we? Smiling at the use of the subjunctive, in fact, proves your culture twice over, because you recognize it to begin with and then because you feel superior to it. Lastly, I amuse you and it is said without vanity, this implies in you a certain open mindedness. Consequently, you are in a way, but no matter, professional interests, uh, professions interest me less than sects. Allow me to ask you two questions and do not answer, if you consider them indiscreet. Do you have any possessions? Some? Good. Have you shared them with the poor? No. Then you are what I call a seducee. If you are not familiar with the scriptures, I admit that this would not help you, but it does help you. So, you know the scriptures. Decidedly, you interest me. Uh, seducees are uh, Jewish groups uh, which are uh, supposedly quarrelsome and uh, extremely wealthy. So, uh, they denied the immortality of the soul, 
So, uh, this is a comment on the Jews. Jews. So, um, but it is not exactly what uh, Camus is doing here is being very satirical. Yeah, Jews were uh, persecuted because they were believed to be uh, tainted. They were supposedly greedy, um, uh, amassing wealth, not sharing it with the poor, etcetera, etcetera. So, therefore, it uh, in a way it gave the Nazis uh, the moral superiority, the moral right to um, persecute them. Okay, so, this is a satire on the uh, general uh, generally accepted beliefs of those times. You are leaving already? Forgive me for having perhaps detained you. No, I beg you, I won't let you pay. I am at home at Mexico City and have been particularly pleased to receive you here. I shall certainly be here tomorrow as I am every evening and I shall be glad to accept your invitation. Your way back? Well, but if you do not have any objection, the easiest thing would be for me to accompany you as far as the harbour. Thence, by going around the Jewish quarter, you will come to those handsome avenues with the trams loaded with flowers and noisy as thunder trooping down them. Your hotel is one of them, the Damak, the Damrak, sorry. You first, please. I live in the Jewish quarter or what was called so until our Hitlerian brethren. Now, Hitlerian brethren, the, uh, the Nazis. Okay, so, this is another satirical reference, okay. Hitlerian brothers spaced it out a bit. So, um, the place where he is residing right now, it was a, uh, a Jewish quarter, but then uh, the, the Nazis, they spaced it out or uh, just uh, raised it to the ground. What a clean up! 75,000 Jews deported or assassinated. That is real vacuum cleaning. I admire the diligence, that methodic, methodical patience. When one has no character, one has to apply a method. Here it did wonders, no one can deny it. And I am living on the site of one of the greatest crimes in history. Perhaps that is what helps me to understand the gorilla and his mistrustfulness. Thus, I can struggle against my natural inclination carrying me towards what I like. When I see a new face, something inside me sounds the alarm, slow, danger, even when the attraction is strongest, I am on my guard. Do you know that in my little village, during a reprisal operation, a German officer courteously asked an old woman to please choose which of her two sons would be shot as a hostage. Choose, can you imagine that? That one? No, this one. And see him go. Let us not dwell on it, but believe me, any sort of surprise is possible. Now, uh, this incident uh, based on a true story, it is a recorded event where um, a German soldier before killing one of the two children of a woman uh, actually asked, uh, insisted uh, uh, in knowing that w which of the two children should be shot, which of the two children should be killed. So, uh, now asking a parent to choose between the lives of her children, okay, that is the height of cruelty, that is the height of um, barbarism. And uh, uh, if you remember Sophie's Choice, the novel by uh, William Styron, it deals with the same theme. Sophie's Choice, she is forced to choose uh, which child would she prefer to, li uh, to see live. Okay, so, it's, she has a boy and a girl and uh, uh, when she is in the concentration camp, when the children and the mother of the children, they are, in, they are all together in the camps and then one day she is forced to choose between the lives of the children. It's ha it has to be either the boy or the girl and this is the story, this is the choice that 
Sophie, Sophie was forced to make which one of the child uh, of the two children should live. And uh, what does it do? It leads the parent scarred for life that they willingly let go of one child. And that was that was uh, the extent to which the Nazis wanted to uh, to wound their prisoners. It's, it was not just the physical attack, but it was also the attack on their souls that is uh, talked about here. I knew one pure heart who rejected distrust. He was a pacifist and a libertarian and loved all humanity and the animals with an equal love, an exceptional soul that is certain. Well, during the last wars of religion in Europe, he had retired to the country. He had written on the threshold, wherever you come from, come in and be welcome. Who do you think answered that noble inv invitation? The militia, who entered and made themselves at home and disembowelled him. Now, this is what happens and this is a very cynical view of, of the society. Um, a person who refused to be corrupted uh, by the atrocities around him and in order to proclaim his faith for the humanity, he puts up a sign on his door, all are welcome, anyone can come and make themselves at home here. And uh, the, the army enters his house and brutally kills him. So, that is what happens when one is too trusting, when one is too good, it does not work in today's world. Oh, uh, Pado Madam, but she did not understand a word of it anyway. All these people are uh, out so late, despite the rain, which has not let up for days. Fortunately, there is gin, the sole glimmer in this darkness. Do you feel the golden copper colored light it kindles in you? I am walking through the city of an evening in the warmth of gin. I walk for nights on end. I dream or talk to myself interminably. Yes, like this evening and I fear making your head swim somewhat. Thank you, you are most courteous. But it is my overflow. As soon as I open my mouth, sentences pour out. Besides, this country inspires me. I like this crowd of people swarming on the pavements, wedged into a little space of houses and canals, hemmed in by fogs, coal lands, and the sea steaming like wet washing. I like it for it is double, it is here and elsewhere. So, you, you see uh, like its people, the country also uh, has a double, the, uh, you know the hypocrisy, the duplicity, it is everywhere, it is there in the city itself. The city has two faces like people. Okay, so, it is a commentary, it is a brutal commentary on the then European society, its moral hypocrisy, its duplicity, its mendacity and the lies it told to itself and its people. Yes, indeed, from hearing their heavy tread on the damp pavement, from seeing them more ponderously in and out of their shops, full of uh, gilded herrings and jewel the colour of dead leaves. You probably think they are here this evening. You are like everybody else. You take these good people for a tribe of syndics and merchants, counting up their gold crowns together with their chances of eternal life, whose only lyricism consists in occasionally, without doffing their broad brimmed hats, taking anatomy lessons. You are wrong. They walk along with us. Holland is a dream, a dream of gold and smoke. It is like a picture of hell being drawn. Okay, gold, smoke, um, smokier by day, more gilded by night. So, greed, um, okay, flesh trade, smoke, uh, the heat, it is almost like living in hell. We will continue with this. Thank you.